Hi guys, welcome to a new episode of Cooking in Times of Corona, Homesick Edition. <laughs> so today I'm making some picadillo and picadillo is a dish that my mom used to make me a lot. And it's kind of like a ground beef stew and she would serve it over white rice for me. Today I'm going to serve it over some roasted eggplant. I'm trying to cut down on carbs at night. But yeah, it's really diverse. It's just basically meat sauce. I'm gonna take the stem off. This dish is super simple. Just gonna cut it right in half. And I'm going to score it all the way down. So I'm doing, doing pretty large score right there. And then I'm gonna go across and create a grid pattern. This way I can get some flavor in there and it's gonna get really nice and golden and pretty. Plus eggplant's delicious. It gets super creamy when you roast it for a while and it's so easy to make. Very underrated vegetable. And so what I'm gonna do is open it up a little bit and sprinkle some salt and try to get into the nooks and crannies. So I'm gonna let it sit for like 20, 30 minutes let some of the moisture come out of the eggplant and I'll rinse it off and that'll get rid of a lot of the bitterness that eggplant often has. While my eggplant sits, I have a pound of ground beef here. I'll season it with adobo. It's just salt, granulated garlic, and oregano, black pepper, and turmeric. It's really simple, basic ingredients, but if you don't have this, just use salt and pepper. I'm pretty liberal in there, and this adobo, they just, it smells like my family's cooking. So it definitely transports me. It's doing the job. So a little bit of olive oil in a large skillet. And I'm gonna go put it in. And the second it hits the pan, I'll season the other side. So I'm just gonna start breaking it up as soon as it hits the pan. I want to get a little color on the meat, color flavor, so medium high heat on this. And I feel like all moms make this and, and everyone has their own version or like secret ingredient. I remember my mom used to put a can of beer instead of using broth and give it a really good flavor. Kind of wishing I had a medalla right now. Medalla's the Puerto Rican beer. I kind of wish I had one laying around in the fridge right now so I could use it, but I don't, so I'm just gonna use water and it'll be fine. So just keep on breaking it up while it cuts. And I'm gonna season a little bit more. One of my favorite things to do when my mom would make this was just take the plain ground meat and munch on it while she was cooking it. It tastes so good by itself. So once I've broken up all that meat and it's starting to get brown, I'm gonna push it to the sides and I'm gonna hit it with my sofrito. And sofrito is the base of all Puerto Rican cooking. Everyone does it differently, but the way I make it is I process some veggies in the food processor or the blender. And sofrito is a great way to preserve aromatic veggies during quarantine season and then just give your food tons of flavor. You can use it for soups, stews, you can use it in sauces. I just put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it flat and then whenever I need it, I just break apart little chunks. And I'm just gonna let this sofrito melt in this water and then I'm gonna fry it up with the meat. Give it tons of flavor. While my sofrito works, I just wanna show you my eggplants. They've been sitting here for like 15 minutes. So you see how a lot of the moisture has come out of them. This has been like 30 minutes, but if you have more time, just let them sit for like an hour and then rinse them. That much more bitterness is gonna come out of them. I'm just super hungry, so I wanna get them in the oven already. So I'm just gonna rinse them off, squeeze them a little bit, or and then clean towel, just pat it dry. So this is just a sheet pan. I'm gonna set it up on my sheet pan. Take one garlic clove, 
You can chop it or use your grater. I like my grater because it just kind of dissolves. And just, oh. And just grate a couple garlic cloves on each eggplant. And the garlic's gonna roast in the oven and it's gonna get sweet and golden brown. Plus it's so good for you and it's so simple. It's literally just eggplants, garlic, salt, olive oil. But it's delicious. And it's a perfect guilt-free base to carry my picadillo instead of white rice. If you don't have eggplant though, make some white rice. It's perfect for this. It soaks up all the sauce in the picadillo. So I'm just going to re-season a little bit with salt. I'm going to do a good splash of olive oil. And just massage all that garlic all over and inside the nooks and crannies of the eggplant. Go all around. So I just want to show you what my eggplant looks like. So load it up on the olive oil. And now we're just gonna go straight in the oven. I have it at 450. All the sofrito is melted now and I'm just gonna push all the meat towards the center of the skillet. Some really nice golden brown caramelized pieces of meat. Alexa, shut up. Alexa's talking to me. I don't know why. She's been creeping me out lately. Just have a can of diced tomatoes right here. But if you don't have diced tomatoes, just feel free to use tomato sauce or crushed tomatoes, whatever you have. Doing half a can for one pound of meat. I don't like it to be that tomato-y. Just gonna squash up those tomatoes a little bit. I want all that juice in the tomatoes to evaporate. So I'm just gonna let it sit there for a while. And evaporating means it's gonna caramelize a little bit. All the natural sugars in the tomatoes are gonna come out and it's gonna give the sauce a lot of deep, rich, sweet flavors. So we're building flavor. First with the adobo, then with the sofrito, and now with the tomatoes. I have some potatoes over here that decided that they wanted to sprout. So I'm just gonna quarter them and throw them in the sauce. I love papitas and the sauce, little potatoes. And the potatoes soak up all the flavor from the sauce and they get so yummy in there. Stir again my sauce. I just remembered, I have some ground chipotle and adobo sauce. Just gonna put a little bit for spiciness. But if you don't like spicy food, disregard the chipotle. Oh yeah, oh the smell here is starting to get so good. So now that all the liquid from the tomatoes has evaporated, I'm gonna throw in my potatoes, spread them around. And if this was my mom, this would be beer, but I don't have beer. So I'm gonna have to settle for water. And so what this is gonna do, it's gonna help the potatoes cook. And while they cook, all that liquid is going to reduce and it's going to get really saucy. So I'm just going to simmer this gently for 10 to 15 minutes until my potatoes get soft and it'll be ready to serve. It's literally easy as that. I forgot to add this at the beginning. It's just oregano, but it's super good for you and healthy. They actually even sell these as pills. Um, I would have liked to add this when I added the adobo but I kind of slept on that and I forgot I had it. So I'm just gonna add it right now. It'll be fine. I think that's good enough. And I like to sort of pinch it and crush it as it's going in because it gets all those natural oils in the oregano out so all the flavor comes out. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and I just wanna, oh, I just wanna taste my meat. It's good salt-wise, but I think it needs a little sweetness, so I'm just gonna add a little squirt of honey. But if you don't have honey, you can also add ketchup. Ketchup is tomato, and it has a lot of sweetness as well, so you can add some ketchup or 
maple syrup, agave, a little bit of sugar. That's up to you. Just taste it and make sure it's well balanced in taste. You want it to be a little sweet, a little savory. I like it a little spicy. I'm also adding some um, black peppercorns. And you can find these in the grocery store. You don't need a fancy pepper mill. But I do like fresh ground pepper. Let's stir this around. Yeah, this will be this will definitely be enough for me for four or five days. I may have to freeze it because I think I made a little too much. But it's okay because it's a stew. That's the good thing about stews. You can freeze it and the longer it sits, the better it gets. I'm just gonna try a potato, see if they're cooked yet. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, so my picadillo is ready. And I'm gonna check on my eggplant. So my eggplant is ready. I cooked it at 450 for 30 minutes. And then I turned on the broiler. I just wanna show you. It gets really nice and golden brown and it smells so good from the garlic. And how do you know it's done? Just touch it and it's already soft. So you see how, how I'm touching it and my fingerprint is staying on there. It's not bouncing back. That means it's ready. We're gonna take one of those eggplants and this is super light, so half an eggplant is plenty for me. It's not too much food. And these little bits here where it's caramelized, they, they get this delicious, sweet, rich texture. And then I just want to show you my picadillo. It's a little sweet, salty, spicy. It's a little bit of everything. Starchy with the potatoes. And those potatoes help sort of thicken up the sauce and the picadillo a little bit. We're just gonna spoon it right over. You can make this with rice too. That's how I always had it as a kid. Just gonna do some of that liquid. Use this as meat sauce for pasta. You can use it as a filling for empanadas. Always <laughs> some avocado. And lastly, I'm gonna do a little fresh chopped cilantro, but if you don't have fresh, you can use dried as well. That's it guys, picadillo with roasted eggplant. Enjoy.